Hi, everyone. I'm very happy, very pleased um, uh, to be able uh, to talk to you today. Um, it's a new role for me. I'm um, now here talking to you um, as the owner and founder of Allotropia. Um, we're a very young company, so it's even more important um, to be here on stage. And I will start with the, with the keynote um, talking a little bit about um, uh, the, the, the new company. Um, as an aside, you, you see that, or you, maybe you even hear that in the background. We're here in Hamburg, um, hosted by a um, shared housing project. Um, thanks for, for having us um, with a small group of um, um, German hackers, a few more to come in the next two days. Um, and we're trying this, this hybrid thing for the first time. Um, didn't quite work out um, for the first uh, try for this talk, so I hope it's it's getting better and we're learning and improving as we go. Okay, so without further ado, let's start. Um, quick introduction, um, who we are. We are um, based in Hamburg, just started January this year, so startup, very young company. Um, and we are a spin-off of uh, CIB, uh, my former company, so we essentially just took the uh, the free and open source people there, the team spun out a new company and are now exclusively focused on free and open source software. Um, leadership team, myself um, and my former boss, Lee Brandner, was also um, co-investor um, in the new company. Our team right now is a core team of uh, seven people, certified, also certified LibreOffice developers, uh, collectively more than 70 years um, of experience um, with the code base. Um, and we do pretty much everything from core development in C++ over to Java, Python, basic, including training uh, for, for other developers for extension or integration development. We do deployments, migrations. Uh, we are active in the uh, standardization landscape. So we do um, mostly ODF, but also a bit of OXML. Um, standards work, um, and we do all this, um, yeah, whatever you have to do um, to to be uh, regarded as um, modern in terms of DevOps and secure development processes. Um, our partners, um, that's um, why, why we're here, why we're able to work and provide uh, what we can, um, because we have um, strong partners, first and foremost, CIB. Um, the um, kind of parent company or co-investor, um, still partner for sales and for consulting, um, mostly for scaling up if there's a need, um, the workforce. Um, pretty um, solid old uh, um, medium-sized company in Germany based in Munich, um, 23 million turnover, 2019, more than 180 employees and doing everything that is um, in, that is um, um, in, in the in the area of document management. Recently, also with AI support. Second partner, I'm very happy about that. Collabora. Michael already mentioned it. Um, very important partnership for us uh, for being able to have a, f a full featured offering um, in the product scape um, for online and mobile. Um, and we're also having a product and technology partnership and I'm quite happy that that works out um, for, for that area. Beyond that, we have partners for trainings and migrations. Um, most, if not all of them, from the, the wider LibreOffice ecosystem, uh, most of them also certified. So what are we offering? What is actually our business model? Um, which is first and predominantly um, LibreOffice Consulting. So it's the classic, you have a free, um, a free product or um, open source product, um, and you offer um, services around that, like consultancy, bug fixing, feature development, um, support, uh, trainings, and, and that's what we do, um, and also long-term support. Um, the second um, product we have is an LTS version, which is still under the CIB brand, which is well-established um, under um, TDF license. 
um, and we have um, desktop version for Windows and Linux with volume license agreements, and we do custom and bespoke changes um, in that branch. Um, and of course, which is the major point, uh, we do regular security updates um, on that version. Um, additionally, that version is also available um, in the Windows Store um, if you like to buy that. Um, beyond that, we are members um, or affiliated with a number of organizations. The most important I'd like to list here is Open Source Business Alliance, uh, which is a, in the German speaking um, areas, a lobby organization. Um, we are OASIS uh, member and um, sponsoring one um, uh, editor in the uh, ODFTC. Um, and last, but definitely not least, um, we are affiliated in very, very many ways with LibreOffice and the Document Foundation. Um, I'm on the board. Um, other people are contributing um, code, standardization work, other things, both in their paid and in their spare time. <clears throat> and we're also uh, members of the advisory board um, of the Document Foundation. Right, um, so that's um, in all uh, briefness, uh, a quick walkthrough to what Allotropia is doing. I'm, I'm not alone, I'm here and I'm very proud um, with a team of wonderful people. Um, some of them here, some of them still coming. Um, many of them will have talks over the conference so you can see them on stage either or as pre-recorded, but then chat with them. Um, in the coming three days. You know all of them. It's Michael, it's Jan Marek, it's Samuel, it's Vasili, it's Armin, um, and a number of uh, more to come there in the, in the next time. So we're actually growing and, and hiring um, for selective positions. Um, okay, but since I'm not here to sell the company to you, it's mostly just to introduce you to what we're doing. Um, let me instead um, use the time and spend a few minutes and a few moments on personal thoughts um, while I have the stage. Um, because with um, the, the new role here and, and a bit of time to reflect and also um, with discussions we had on the board and discussions we had in the community, um, I, I, I came to think about what it means um, to to be t to be LibreOffice, what it means to be um, being involved with that code base and and with that project for so very many years, um, and there have been many for me. So um, I. I started back in the day, that's almost, it's a bit more than 20 years ago. I started in, in spring uh, 2001 at Sun Microsystems working on, on OpenOffice. And I've been um, like purely engineering, um, nothing much else. Um, so I was a paid engineer working on the, on the code base. And um, Talking to community people, um, learning, learned about their their worries and their and their problems and their challenges, and also getting quite some insight into how a big corporation works uh, that sponsors an open source project. I moved on to SUSE then, um, where my responsibilities also grew into um, standards work, um, but also still mostly engineering. Um, but I was suddenly on, on the other side of the fence. Um, so I was um, I was in a comparatively small team. I had to talk to the this this big Sun team, uh, trying to get my code changes accepted. Um, and um, yeah, that was interesting because it was quite different. And and things that I I saw I, I didn't see as a problem before in, in the in the Sun role. Uh, I did notice actually they, they are a problem if you are in a different role. Um, and then I moved on again um, inside SUSE. So I, I stopped being paid for doing LibreOffice work um, and instead was contributing in my in my free time. And it was in my paid time, I was doing other open source work. 
So that was another change in perspective when suddenly I I learned what it means to be to have very limited time at your hands um, and not having the liberty and the privilege to to contribute um, all your your paid time. And then again, some change came and I, I moved to CAB uh, and was again, um, well, not really being paid. So so I had to earn, um, or I was leading a team of LibreOffice developers, I had to earn the money um, mostly to pay for the team. So again, different different perspectives and different, um, different roles. And I, I was growing into sales and marketing and other areas. And then finally, with the start of this year, I founded my own company um, and I'm now really responsible for, for getting um, uh, the money in to pay the people. Um, and so, so the newest, the latest change is more that of, of an investor. So taking own money, taking life savings, um, founding a company, um, hiring people, paying them to work on open office and LibreOffice. Um, and again, a change in perspective. And again, surprising insights into problems that I didn't notice were problems before. So bottom line, what, what I think I'm, I'm trying to, to, to get across here is that, that perspectives matter greatly. And everybody has, has a bias, everybody, and then it includes me. So take whatever I say here, whatever I, um, I'm telling you with a big grain of salt. Um, it's, it's hard to imagine or it's, it's, it's actually, it's not easy to walk a mile into some other person's shoes. And, and I think but with the experience, with the past experience that I made, it's worthwhile to assume best intentions on the other side. Um, it's probably fair to say that almost everybody um, who's working in this community is working as of today is working here and still around because they care a lot about LibreOffice. They also might care about their personal income. They might care about their investments, but at least one of the motivators clearly is that people care um, about LibreOffice. Um, so very seldomly things are purely evil. I, I would, I would rather venture uh, the guess that they're never purely evil, but just things, decisions, ways to do things really differ um, depending on your role that you're in. And um, if you find something weird that I'm doing or that, that my team is doing, then assume that's there for a reason and not because I, we want to annoy someone or because we're doing something nefarious. Uh, and then maybe let's, instead of um, people being upset and not talking, let's just um, get into a talk. Good. So um, to condense that a little bit into something perhaps more uh, tangible, um, from my experience, what are volunteers doing broadly? So, so this is more like for the for the investors and the employees and, and the staff people among uh, the audience here. Um, just put put yourself, try to put yourself into the shoes of a volunteer. What what are what is the driving there? What is the problem? Usually, broadly, don't want to say that's that's always the case. There's always exceptions to that rule, but broadly volunteers have very limited time at their hands so so what they tend to do is something that is usually not massive or if it's a massive change and it's a change they can they can do bit by bit little by little um, because there's only so much you can do with um with a complex code base um and just a few hours um in the evening you you can't do the, the level of, of rework, the level of refactoring, given the same education, the same capabilities, the same smartness compared to somebody who's doing that eight, nine, 10 hours every day. <clears throat> so um, that, that, that's kind of natural um, selection there, what, what volunteers tend to do. But it's important work and it's work that on the other hand, um, 
most of the, the, the paid developers, at least historical, historically didn't do because there was no business reason, for example, to do it. So all the cleanups, all the improvements, um, all the smaller changes that might not get a paying customer to, to do them, those are wonderful things that, that um, our volunteers are doing. Um, on the other hand, the way that the volunteers work, of course, for the for the paid developers or for the um, for those um, or perhaps for TDF as, as an organization, um, there's always this um, will this volunteer be still around um, the next year? Will will the the massive change this person has been doing in their spare time and now once merged, once that lands? Will that person still be around and maintain that in half a year or in a year's time or fix the bugs, the inevitable regressions? So, and, and that's this, this tension there that, that, that builds up why sometimes there's pushback in, in the review for, for a massive change or why somebody thinks that it should be a bit more polished or it should be, it's too risky to, to merge um, as, an, as one large um, atomic change and rather once it's split down and easily rever reversible if necessary. Um, and on the other hand, <clears throat> the volunteers perhaps being frustrated by this code base still being so complex and the build still taking so long and all their spare time energy being sapped by, by those silly obstacles and they really don't want to have uh, fun and, and be productive. Paid contributors. Um, I mean, most of the time they, they you would expect they, they do what they are told um, to do. So what the, their employer or their, um, their, their customers is, is paying them to do. Um, but as I said, um, that's probably for almost everybody um, active in LibreOffice. Um, most of the, I would say, all, all the, 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 the paid uh, contributors are also volunteers because they most of them contribute in their spare time. They go well beyond what, what I would expect from an employee in um, answering questions, helping, um, helping volunteers, reviewing codes, um, talking nicely about LibreOffice, um, and really working much more than, um, than they are paid for. So, and then they're frustrated if they are just put into this, this bucket of, um, oh, you're just, um, you're just a paid person and, and, and kind of not a, not a true volunteer. Um, and I think we're not, not treating them fairly when we do that. Um, and on the other hand, of course, they are in a privileged position. So um, when, when talking to volunteers uh, and assuming um, that those people would perhaps have the same time and, and, and could, could invest the same amount of work into polishing their code as they can themselves, like um, expecting the same standards, it's perhaps equally problematic and off-putting for a volunteer. So again, uh, try to put yourself into the other person's shoes, um, change perspective, try to understand what the other per person thinks or drives. Last but not least, investors. Um, to, to some extent, that, that's what I am. So I, I put significant amounts of money into this. So why am I here? Is it just for the money? <clears throat> or am I just a very charitable person? And um, I don't want um, I don't want to see my life savings back. Um, well, in reality, um, it's for me um, almost exclusively. I care deeply about the project um, and the people um, and open source, um, and that was a way um, for me to continue what I did before, um, perhaps on a different level with a bit more control. Um, and say in, in what I do and how I do it and when I do it and with whom. Um, so I'm definitely not here um, for the money beyond the fact that, of course, I have a family um, who needs to eat. Um, and uh, that's my motivation. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's that's kind of similar to, to a lot of people who put money into into open source and especially who put money into LibreOffice development. Um, but
but it's not exclusively so. We had contributors who were um, probably venture capital driven and they were purely for the um, return of investment, which is fair enough. I mean, at the end of the day, um, that's how the world works. And at the end of the day, if it's not worthwhile um, putting your money there, then perhaps something is wrong with the project if there's no future, if there's nothing that can be gained from it. So, and again, but of course, again, then the perspective changes and, and you realize that um, if a lot of money is at stake, um, that perhaps a few decisions, a few things, how you do that, or when you do that, or what you expect in return when you, um, when you do something actually changes as well. So again, I'm asking for a bit of um, understanding um, that with the change in role, perhaps a few things are more important for me than they were before. But I do promise that I will try to remember the different roles I've been um, in. And um, if I forget, please remind me. Okay, so that's all from that bit and um, I think the most important um, I save for the last is um, please all of you do enjoy LibreOffice conference. I will. Um, I hope that we can meet each other in person again the next year. Um, yeah, Let's be careful with each other. Let's stay safe and healthy. I wish you all a wonderful conference. Take care. Thank you so much, Thurston. <laughs> a big plus from me too. Thank you so much uh, for your words. I really understand you since I am on my own, let's say from you know, 20, 22 years. Not that big, but anyway, I can partly understand your worries and uh, I'm with you and I really share uh, your words. Then, uh, Anyway, there are seven minutes uh, left, and I'm watching if there are any questions, but I can't at the moment see any questions in the in the chat room, uh, in the chat of the room one, nor in the main chat. So I invite anyone who uh, may want to to prompt a question to do it now, possibly on room one chat. Uh, I don't know if there are questions from the audience there. I heard someone screaming. So, so I would, um, unless there's questions, I'll probably just go on mute here. There's a little bit of background noise. We're um, uh, we're in the chat space here. Oh, I, I see a question, not in right in the right place. But by the way, the question is, if the company name means something <laughs> from Kowalan. The company name, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, so it's a, um, it's kind of a, it's it's not a real world word. It's um, it's um, uh, it's a made of word, but it's um, related to uh, allotropes, which is some uh, a way of uh, uh, chemical elements to exist in very different shapes or forms. Um, so, so, so I, I really like that idea, uh, and there's also this 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 buckyball on the there was the buckyball on the second slide. Um, uh, let me quickly call this up. Um, so, for example, um, carbon um, comes in different different forms. That essentially it's the same element, but it has very very different um, uh, chemical and physical characteristics. For example, diamonds. That's carbon. Graphite, that's carbon as well. Um, buckyballs is also carbon, um, which is really what, what LibreOffice code base um, also shows. So you, you, you find LibreOffice in so very many different shapes or forms. Sometimes you don't even recognize it, but it's included in the, in the product or in the software. Sometimes it's obvious. It's, it's LibreOffice that you install, but you install it on your mobile phone, you install it on your uh, on your desktop, you install it on your server. So yeah, I, I like that metaphor. So that, that's where the name came from. And by the way, uh, I guess it is not a coincidence that uh, 
the language is C and the carbon is C as well, the very same symbol. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm sure we we can we can spin a lot of um, stories around that. So so that the the good thing with, with those metaphors is yeah, they're they're quite malleable and uh, and if they're abstract enough, you you find you find lots of connections. But yes, absolutely, C C plus plus. That's in there. Indeed, I can't remember in chemical. Uh, it should be four the the linking uh, possibilities of carbon. So C plus plus should be C C. Plus 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 <laughs> to be chemical equivalent, but <laughs> jokes apart. 